It's story time with Crystal. Oh, yeah. Time for something a little bit different. Today, this will be a story about a woman who has been corrupted by this evil force, and she is struggling with that corruption and also trying to, in a nutshell, be a better person. Um, and she's losing that fight. She's not quite there yet because this corruption is pretty, it's pretty strong. And uh, reading this to you guys today is my uh, voice acting warm up. So thank you so much for that. If you want to learn more about me, to crystalsimagination.com. Shout out to everybody who is paying attention to this Crystal's Imagination podcast. I love it that we are storytelling today. And uh, we've got some book reviews coming up. We've got some other fun things coming up as well. So it won't be just story time, but I'm having a lot of fun warming up and practicing these stories in the VO booth with you guys. So that's what we're doing. So hang out if you want. We love, we, I don't know who we is. I love that you're here. Let's do it. Kill them all. They hurt you. They always hurt you. We will consume them and their souls will scream. It is what they deserve. Kill them. Aria. Do they know it hurts? The phantom pain of where your arms used to be? You are a monster. You hurt them. You deserve it. They were your friends. I... I can't remember. Silence! They always hurt you. See the pain. The death. The lies. This is your life. This is my life. No. No. Yes. No. You did this. Did we? Or is this the consequence of your failure? Lifetime after lifetime. I don't. We will consume them. We will have what we want. But so too shall you. They betray you. They will not help you. No one will help you. No one has ever helped you. How could you be anything but a monster? Peace for Aria was a lie. To remember a past life, a blessing, and a curse. But no one should have done as Aria did. No one should have looked at them all. No human mind should have absorbed the details as she had done. The fact that she could string together coherent sentences at all was remarkable. But her mind was never quiet. There was no peace, no end to the pain. Memories equaled emotion. It spun around again and again, Over and over, always a voice there. Her voice. Its voice. Her head always hurt. The glare of light always hurt. Loud voices hurt. Alarms hurt. Noise hurt. And every time she slept, she dreamed of all the ways she had died. It never stopped. You want the pain to stop? Such sympathy in Michael's voice. Her friend understood. Her friend. Arya told her the truth about Gabriel. She should tell Michael the truth because Michael was her friend. Mm. No, no, too late, too late. Because she had wanted so much for that archangel to come into her cell so that she could fight, so she could do what she always did, so she wouldn't have to think about. Puppet. Oh. That she was a puppet. I'm so sorry, Michael. He's so lost. Gabriel. Dante 
tried to help me, but I didn't fight back. Were they friends? Did he love me the way Michael loves Angela? London, she hugged me. Coda, such a gentle soul. There is wisdom? Lexi, they will betray you. We will consume them. You will destroy the records. You will obey. No. Yes. Puppet. That bitch. That bitch called her that. Puppet. She the reason. Arya screamed her robotic arms taking hold of Roman's desk, flipping it so high in the air it hit the ceiling, papers and computers and odds and ends flinging every which way. The unfortunate man tasked with guarding the room she currently occupied collapsed under the sound of her scream. A banshee scream. The lifetime of pain. A weapon. The lifetimes of pain. Her weapon in so many ways. Roman's desk hit the ground, wood splintering and cracking. Aria grabbed her head, robotic fingers digging into her hair, finding her breath, searching for control. What was control, really? <laughs> the thought made her laugh. <laughs> the sound was insane. Because as much as she wished she wasn't, she was, wasn't she? The door opened. Roman came in, flanked by several more guards. <laughs> as if they could save him. One carried several suits for her to pick from. Roman looked at the state of his office, shock then anger filling his features at the mess. He didn't even bother, sparing a glance at the poor man on the floor. His eyes focused on Aria, drawing himself up in that intimidating manner that worked so well on others. What happened? Aria slowly slid her hands from her hair. She cracked her neck. God, he was pathetic. She'd been abused, beaten. Worse in other lifetimes by men just like him. Pity he didn't understand what that would do to a girl. Wait, Dante. Dante. Dante was different. Dante had tried to help her. I mean, he might have sent his wife to be killed by the Anunnaki, but Dante had never... And really, Aria had been inside her head. Ella deserved everything she got. Silly bitch, that one. London would call her tomorrow. Oh, that was nice. Maybe they would get coffee. Such a lovely soul, that London. So smart. She would need clothes. Yes, clothes. No more prison garb. She was free. Hmm. She would never be free. Aria walked around the mess, still ignoring Roman's inquiry, examining the selections. This suit for tonight, the other for tomorrow. I'll take it. Roman, tell them to leave. All but you. We have much to discuss. She could feel him bristle that she'd given him an order. Regardless, he complied, taking his anger out on them. Aria smirked, changing in front of him. She heard the click of the door closing. She could feel his eyes on her as she changed. She ignored him and was pleased, perhaps. He was not stupid enough to try and touch her. When she was finished, she leaned against the windowsill, folding her arms in front of her. Why is the AI still here? Roman smirked. as if I had any intention of releasing an asset so valuable. You lie. So? You've made me a liar, Roman. To my friends. Roman blinked, then barked out a laugh. <coughs> my dear, they are certainly not your friends. Now, we need to discuss the timing. 
A dozen images flashed through her mind, lifetimes where she'd been laughed at, mocked, not taken seriously. Roman felt the pressure in his head, the ringing in his ears. Then came the pain, his face twisted. Stop. You made me out to be a liar, Roman. I said stop. I don't want to be a liar anymore. You fucking bitch. I will crack your crystal under my boot and let the demiurge. Oh, she was over the debris in a second. Her speed superhuman. Her robotic hand cracking against his face. Just a slap but one that split his lip and set his head whipping to the side. You will not disrespect me, Roman. You will not make me out to be a liar. Aria drew her hand back, folded them in front of her, regarded him in silence, both of them in pain, for much different reasons. You cannot do what you want with Cadenza. Cadenza cannot control the demiurge, you handsome idiot. Arya reached out, running her fingers through his hair. So you've betrayed me, and Coda, and my friends for nothing. It should cost something, don't you think? Yes, yes, I think it should. What should it cost? Take his eye for me. London had suggested that to her. Yes, yes, I certainly will. Arya grabbed Roman by the hair, jerking his head up. His face was sweaty, contorted in pain. Fury raged in his eyes, but she saw it, felt it. That fear, too. Arya smiled. Pull your eye out, Roman. The fear grew stronger. That little dagger in your pocket will do. I don't care which eye you pick, my handsome idiot. Arya stopped gripping his hair and ruffled it. Roman clenched his teeth. Stop! Don't make your eye now! He flinched under the tone of the command. His mind was not strong enough to fight her, and he was too stupid, too arrogant to know it. He belonged to her the moment they locked eyes, the day SVT brought her to this world. With shaking hands, Roman removed his pocket knife. It didn't belong to him, but the wife he'd murdered. Perhaps it was somewhat fitting then that it was the same weapon he used to carry out her request. He screamed the whole time. Arya found it amusing no one came to check on him. When it was done, she held his eye in her hand. I'll need a box, Roman. Oh, never mind. I'll find one. Go and get cleaned up. I'll see you tomorrow. She released him from her mind prison. Roman ripped a hanky out of his other pocket, holding it over his empty eye socket, and without saying another word, rushed out of the room. Arya smirked before looking down at the eyeball in her hand. She held it up. I see you. (laughs) She laughed at the joke, closed her hand around it, and walked out of the office. No one stopped her. Not one. She didn't expect them to, of course. She had a package to send. And it was raining out. Oh, she loved the rain. (laughs) 